Hey folks, and welcome back to looking at substance designer type things in Houdini. I wanted to finish out the series by taking a look at taking our textures that we've generated over in COPS and trying them out on a variety of models. Let's dive in. In the last video we had left off here where we had looked at putting striations into the rocks by using noise and passing it into our normal channels. So let's build out a little setup where we can try our textures out on different models. I'm going to put down the pig and we'll use the rubber toy and we'll use the head. Let's take the three of these and put them into a switch. So we'll put them into a transform uh, because our height field was big so we're going to need to scale them up. And let's put them up to maybe 30 for now. Now let's take the quick material that we created previously and let's just copy and paste that instead of having to go and hook back up all of the uh, the cops paths and we can see that we are starting to get our texture appearing on the pig now we're running into uh, uh, some issues so the issue in this case is that there is an alpha coming through on one of our textures and the alpha is being used for transparency so let's go and deal with that if I go back over to my cop network uh, one of the things we can do to get rid of that problem is we could put down a delete node and I'll just drop it in here on the color and I can say delete a certain plane and in this case the plane I want to delete is A for alpha and I'm just going to copy and paste that. Now to get the textures to update in the viewport we need to move the viewport a little bit. Yes you can see when the viewport moved we lost some of that transparency issue. So unless we explicitly need them for something in our texture, really we should be deleting the alpha uh, towards the end of our graph. I think one of the gotchas when trying to do this type of stuff in Houdini is really watching your alpha the whole way through your composite and graph. Coming back over to our, our 3D viewport now, let's put down a UV transform and let's try scaling our textures. So I'm just going to channel reference these because I want to keep them proportional anyway. And now I can just change the first component and it will change the others. So I'm going to put it up to around four. And you can start to see that our texture is coming through. And we're getting some interesting uh, shapes moving across the surface of our model. Now, one of the issues that I am running into in my 3D viewport over here is I am not getting displacement happening right at the moment. And this seems to be an issue that I'm having. I'm not sure whether you're going to run into this problem yourself because I suspect it is something to do with my graphics card. What is happening in my case is there is a principal shader inside in this quick material and the principal shader will either show a normal map or a displacement map. It will not show both. So that's a little bit annoying for me in the default viewport that I can't see height and normal at the same time. Now I have a workaround for that which is I can bring it over into Solaris which is the rendering context in Houdini and I will be able to get viewport displacement and normal map uh, and I will also be able to set it up to render out with Karma. So let's take a look at doing that setup and then I'm going to jump over into the Solaris context. So in Solaris I'm going to put down a scene import node to pull in my geometry from SOPS and I'm going to go and grab Geo1 here and accept the pattern and here we go there's our pig being pulled into Solaris. So now I need to set up some materials over here. So I'm going to put down a material library and I'm going to put down an assign material node and I'm going to put down a merge node. Just off to the side here, I'm going to create a camera. And I'm going to plug the camera into the merge. Let's jump into our camera, lock it and then move it around and just line it up for our pig here. So this is our basic setup. Inside my material library now, I'm going to go and create a shader. So I'm going to use a material X shader, but I want it inside in a sub network. And that is because uh, I'm going to do displacement. So I'm going to use this one, USD material X subnet. And if I dive in here, it has already created the displacement node for me and the displacement output. So let's make this just a little bigger for a minute. I am going to get rid of the material X um, surface here and I'm going to put down a standard surface. Now one of the other advantages for coming in here as well as having your displacement already here is that it shortens all of this list down to just material X nodes. I'm going to go out here to my surface output. So that's going to be my color values and down here is going to be my displacement output. 
we'll put down uh, some image nodes to bring in our textures. And I'm going to have an image node for my base color. And I'm going to have another one for my displacement. And I will have yet another for my normal map. Now the normal map is going to go into a normal map material X node here. So this guy will call in our tech our normal map texture. It will go in here and this will be plugged into normal under the geometry section. So now I run into another gotcha. If I want to reference the textures from COPS directly, I am only going to be able to use Karma CPU. I am not going to be able to use XPU. XPU does not really understand VEX, and I guess all the COPS nodes are going to be written in VEX underneath the hood. So XPU is not going to work by referencing in our COPS nodes. So we need to make a decision then. We can either render with CPU and keep our relative reference to COPS, or we can write our COPS nodes out to disk. So I would suggest always going for the simplest scenario, and the simplest scenario in this case is to write all of our COPS textures out to disk, pull them onto our shader, get it working in the viewport in Solaris to start off with, and then secondly, to get it working when we render with Karma. Now, jumping around between all of these contexts in Houdini uh, can be achieved by using quick marks. And if you're coming from Substance Designer to Houdini, quick marks are very easy to set. Now, while that is user friendly, you end up jumping around quite a lot. And I like my viewport to not change too much while I'm working. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go back to our, um, our Substance setup that we had, and I'm going to adjust it to account for both compositing and for rendering. Uh, so here's my Substance setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a pane up here at the top. So we'll say split top and bottom up here. And this is going to lead to my material library. So it's going to lead into the material library and then into my subnet. And I'm going to set this up to be number three here. And we can go back and set this back to our copnet. So this will have my shader up here so I can adjust that. The other thing I want to be able to do is access the stage. So I'll make a new tab here and I will right click where it says OBJ and I'm going to set that over to stage. Now I'm going to set this up to be number four and I'll go back to my uh, previous tab and I'll set, back, set that back to OBJ. So OBJ is number one here and this viewport is number one. The stage is number four and I'm going to add another tab over here, which I'm going to set to which I'm going to set over to stage. And I'm going to set this guy over to number four as well. So my stage tab is on number four and my stage viewport is on number four. My OBJ level or my SOPS level is on number one and my other viewport over here is also on number one. So Houdini is incredibly flexible. So it basically allows us to be in lots of places at the same time. Now I'm concerned uh, more so with the stage view. So I'm gonna to go to this tab over here with all that set up, I'm going to come back to my desktop here and I'm going to say save current desktop and it is going to save that out as a new substance desktop. Uh, let's get back to our textures. So I could absolutely start referencing this into my shader, but I'm going to stay with the simpler setup first. And the simpler setup is going to be, let's render these out to disk. So I'm going to put down a ROP file output and I'll hook it up to my occlusion here first. And I'm just going to pop this up just for the minute, just so I've got a bit more room and I'll hit P here. And I'm going to write this out to disk. So I'm going to write it out in the render folder and I'm going to get rid of the hip name, but I will keep OS and OS stands for the node name. I'm going to get rid of $F4 because I'm not writing out a sequence and I will leave it as EXR. Uh, I'm going to change this from rendering a animated sequence to rendering just the current frame. So the node name is going to determine what the file is called because of this dollar OS. And I'm going to keep it similar to what we had on the null. So I'm just going to copy this guy, cop out underscore O, and I'll, and I'll put an OR at the end for render. So I'm going to copy that entire node because it's already set up for me. I'm going to grab the name here, paste it, and put an OR on the end, and so on for the other outputs. So I'm going to select all those nodes now and just hit render. 
and it's rendered them very quickly out onto disk. And if I jump out onto disk, so those textures have all been written out to disk and it writes them out very quickly. Uh, let's go and so I've loaded in those textures into my uh, image nodes here. I've actually disconnected both the normal map and the color map just for the moment. Just going to take a look at displacement to start off with. And I'm just going to go up a level. I'm going to rename this subnet. Uh, so let's call it rock underscore MAT. I'm going to come back up to my assigned material here. First off, I'm going to make sure that it is picking up the mesh. And then I'm going to go and point it to my newly named subnet. And let's go and try and render it with Karma and see if we can get some displacement coming through. Now, I only have my displacement turned on here, but we can see it is rendering color. Uh, so we need to go back and check what's happening out in SOPS. You can see in SOPS, it is pointed towards the quick material. So it is actually picking up the quick material uh, and rendering that. There's a principal shader inside in this node when you go digging. Uh, so I don't want to be looking at the quick material. I actually want to be looking at my material X material. So I'm going to put down a null down here and make sure it is pointed towards that. So we call it model out. And let's put our render flag down here on this guy. And there you go. Now we're starting to see the material X material coming through. And I'm starting to get all of that displacement. I'm going to jump back over to my stage here. Uh, let's play around with our displacement just a little bit. Pull it down to 0 0.5. So we get lots of interesting internal shapes with our displacement. So a little gotcha with displacement is we need to go back to the image node here and we do need to change it from color over to float. If you don't do that, you will get displacement going off at a slight angle. So I'm going to change that over to float. Let's go and hook up our normal map here. I've already loaded in the normal texture. So I'm just going to hook this guy up to normal here. And we're starting to get those striations coming in across the top. Now you can see the shading is a little funky and that's often to do with the direction of the Y channel of the normal map. In one of the previous lessons, I had flipped the Y on the quick material. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna come back over to COPS here and I'm going to flip the Y over here. I suspected the other thing that's happening is I had turned my normal map up uh, to get it to show up in the viewport uh, quite high. So I'm gonna pull the normal map strength down here down to one and I'm going to actually pull the scale down to 0 0.25. And you can see, yeah, I'm keeping the finer detail from the normal map, but I'm not getting the funky shading that I was getting before. So that's the normal map brought in. Let's lastly go and plug in our color map. So I'm gonna plug that into base color. And there you go, now the color map is coming through. So now I've got all the detail coming through here. Uh, maybe just to make it look a little bit nicer, let's throw down a dome light and I will point the dome light to one of the HDRIs that ships with Houdini so dollar HFS is going to get you to the right spot and I am going to grab the garage and you can see we're getting some nice shading going on across the surface now there are issues that we still have to resolve uh, probably the primary issue that we're not really dealing with in this setup is the idea of seams so this is not tiling perfectly by any means. We're getting away with an awful lot because it's quite busy at the moment. The rocks and the displacement in the rocks is probably covering up a lot of the seam and tiling issues that we might have. So that is something that we can try and tackle in future videos, uh, potentially in COPS. Now, I'm not particularly fond of the colouring that's going on. It's a little bit too bright here. And ideally, I'd like to be able to go back into COPS and adjust COPS and have it update directly in the viewport. But as I mentioned, there's a bit of a gotcha there. Um... At the moment, I have to write it out onto disk and bring it back in. So instead of writing out the disk, we can reference in these cops, much like what we did into our quick material. This shader right here is working okay. So instead of messing around with this one, what we'll do instead is we'll make a cops friendly version of this material. So I'm gonna go up one level here. Uh, let's rename these guys. So this can be uh, rendered, render, and let's make a copy of it. And we'll call this one Cops. Uh, let's go and uh, fix our material out here. So we'll just point this one to look at render for the moment, because we know that one's working. And what we'll do is we will copy and paste 
and this one we will point over towards the cops and we can put down a switch here to switch between them. So this is going to be our more stable, uh, karma friendly uh, version and this one over here we can tweak with cops and I'll just make it very obvious so I'm just going to call this render and um, we'll call this one cops. So what we want to do inside in this material is set it up so that it is reading directly from our cop network. So here's my color. So I'm just going to go and drag from cops here and I need to put in OP to get it to read correctly. So OP colon. So that's color done. This is my normal. Let's go and grab the normal here. And we'll be doing the same for our explicit. Now there can be stability issues with doing this. I have got it to work fairly consistently. Uh, but often when I've been setting it up, it crashes out on me a little bit, so I'm going to save this file. Just to make sure it's going to behave itself, I'm going to uh, pause the camera rendering for a moment. Let's go back and just look at our OpenGL render. So I'm going to go over to Houdini GL here. So that is the uh, render textures out on disk showing up in our OpenGL viewport over here in Solaris. And you can see that I am getting my normal map here, and I am also getting the displacement. And we're looking at the, the cops shader here, but if I want to jump over to the render shader, kind of handy shortcut, instead of going up and then going over in, so going up here and going over here and then jumping back down again, cops here at the moment, I can right click and say other networks and it looks for other networks at the same level and I can jump over to render. Now sometimes the path doesn't update, but I'm actually in the, uh, the rendered version here. So you can see this is the texture path right, written out to disk. Uh, I can come in here and I can play with the displacement values and you can see I can get displacement in my viewport. And I can also get my normal map being adjusted in my viewport as well. For whatever reasons, it's not working for me over in uh, OBJ land, over in SOPS, but it's working in this implementation here. So while it's nice to get the fancy rendering with Karma, it's also nice to have uh, OpenGL real-time feedback here. Uh, so in this case, what I want to do is start looking at the COP setup. So let's go back over to COPs. And I'm going to do this step by step because I have had stability issues. Uh, so let's go over and look at COPs in our viewport. You can see there's a color shift here, and I suspect this is because I've played around with the COPs network since I wrote the textures out to disk. So that would explain the difference there. I'm not seeing such a huge color shift in other files that I've tried this in. Uh, so this is my COPs setup here. And let's go and try and adjust this just in the OpenGL viewport, and then we can try rendering up the camera. Uh, so I'm going to open up the composite view here, so I can see what's going on with my texture over in COPS. Uh, here's our lookup, so let's try and adjust this. I had set it over to the clips of Moher, but let's go and set it to, I don't know, Magma or something like this. And we'll turn the mask all the way up, so it's really bright and kind of garish. So that's what should be written out at the bottom of COPS. Now, I should see this update over here. What I found that I have to do is I have to right click on here and say update texture, and now it is showing up. Coming in here and hitting this button all the time uh, becomes a little bit of a pain. So it is possible to go into your hotkeys and we can type update textures here. And you can see that it is one of the actions that you've got. Now I have put it to control shift and Q. Uh, so that will update the textures for me. Again, it would be nice to have them update automatically as you change the values here. And there is some hacky ways around that, which I might show in a tips video. As you can see in this case, I'm not going to keep those colors. So I'll come back over here to my uh, lookup. And in this case, let's go back over to our cliffs and I can just hit my control shift and Q over the viewport. And there we are, we have it updated. So, I suspect that although that's a little bit annoying to have to do the update with a hotkey, it's probably not a bad idea, particularly if the network got complicated over here. You could let the cops cook and see the update here, so you're making sure you get the texture that you want, and then hit a hotkey to have an update over here uh, without hanging your system. So I suspect it's not a bad fail safe. Now we've got it working in our viewport here. Uh, I'd like to go and give it a render and see what happens. So let's come down to our switch and put it over to, over to one. And now the COPS version is getting picked up. Now I have been using a dome light uh, and the dome light is going to take quite a long time to render uh, on Karma CPU. So I'm going to put down an area light and I'm just going to move that around. 
uh, and we'll just show that one for the moment. So I'll come back to you in a second when that's done. So what I've done here is I've just added two area lights, uh, one off to either side, and I have dialed down the dome light to about half the intensity, and then my area lights are sitting at about kind of twos and threes. Uh, the COPS implementation is showing up in the viewport, and it can be lit here, and that might be enough for you to do the look development, uh, bouncing over between your COPS setup here and your actual shader here. When you're happy with how it looks, you could write them out to disk and you could render it with Karma XPU. Now you can also try and render it directly from COPS, but what you will find is that it's a little unstable to start off with, so it would definitely stick the file. And you will also find that the render time will increase. So my Karma viewport is paused at the moment. I'm gonna try and unpause it, hopefully it won't crash. And now we can see the COPS implementation is being rendered with Karma, but it is being rendered on the CPU version rather than the XPU version. So we'll try shifting back over. You can see it's taken oh, maybe 35 seconds to get to 50% here. Let's try changing back over to XPU. And you can see that it is going to get up near 50% in about 10 seconds. Okay, so significantly faster on XPU than uh, CPU. Uh, I know there's a little bit of a look difference here. I'm not that concerned about that here. Uh, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I'm going to shift back over to my COPS implementation here. And I should be able to come back over here and play around with these settings. Uh, so, for example, if we... I will set it back before the lighting here. And I'll come back over to my lookup and let's change it to black to orange. And you can see it's starting to update over here. And then I can come down and turn back on my lights. And now I'm getting that orange to black tinge running throughout the color. So I could go and do the same with my normal map and with my displacement. I can tweak them over here and I can, uh, and if necessary, I can update textures here or use my hotkey to, to get it to update. So I can continue around that loop till I get the look dev uh, where I want it to be. And then when I want to do the final shading, I can write these out to disk, switch back over to my render material, do further look development within the shader itself and adjust my lighting here to be a little bit more interesting than what I currently have. I'm just gonna let some of these lighting and look dev images uh, play through in the background while we bring this series to a conclusion. Uh, if you made it through all of the videos, um, congratulations, thanks for putting up with me. And I hope that you got something from these videos and that you can use this texturing and material workflow within your own work. I don't currently see Houdini as being a substance designer type replacement. Having said that, I have been very impressed with my ability to recreate what I would consider core substance um, functionality within Houdini. Now, as you will have seen from the videos, there's quite a few uh, hoops to jump through to get it to behave the way that we would like. And I hope to explore more workflows in upcoming videos that could refine this process and make it a bit more user friendly. But hopefully from this series, you've gotten enough of the core workflow to be able to go and create your own materials. And I look forward to seeing them in the future. Please do post any materials that you create into the comments for these videos so that other users can see the potential of this workflow. For now, I'm going to wrap this one up. And as always, I hope to see you in the next video.